Is Archie Manning the second greatest quarterback in Saints history? We got one more special guest to help us figure it out. Who dat everybody, St. John Butler here, and we are doing one last video figuring out who is the second greatest quarterback in Saints history. Now, we've spoken about Jim Everett. We've spoken about Bobby Bear, We've spoken about Aaron Brooks. We have to include Archie Manning. For a lot of guys, he is on the Mount Rushmore of uh, Saints history. So let's dive in. Our special guest today, Alan Ulrich from the Under the Dome podcast. And Alan, aside from the Manning jersey, the Manning Passing Academy hat, the Manning game playing in the background. I mean, look, look for all the Manning details he's got in there. And a whole lot of nuggets why Archie Manning may in fact be the second greatest quarterback in Saints history. This video is brought to you by SeatGeek.com. Use promo code John Butler at checkout. Save yourself 20 bucks. Let's get back to the video. Hi, Alan Orrick here from Under the Dome here uh, talking about who is the Saints' number two all-time quarterback? And I'm going to talk about my favorite quarterback, Archie Manning, and why I believe he is the number two quarterback all-time for the Saints. Uh, quick five things about Archie. Number one, Archie is the only Saints quarterback to have three consecutive seasons completing 60% of his passes. That is a unique stat, and I want to talk about the 78, 79, and 80 seasons. And, yes, the 80 seasons, the one in 15 one, but – Archie still completed over 60% of his passes with zero running game that season. Uh, Chuck Muncie was traded uh, four games into the season, and then Wayne Wilson was the primary ball carrier along with Tony Galbraith. And yet Archie was still able, with no threat of a serious running game, was still able to complete 60% of his passes. Um, <clears throat> Jim Everett, on the other hand, only has two seasons where he completed 60% of his passes. Uh, that was 1994-95. Bobby Bear never had two consecutive seasons where he did it. He did it in 89 and 91. And what's important about that is in 89, he got benched with three games left to go in favor of John Forcade, setting the stage, unfortunately, for the 1990 season. And the other season was 1992. I'm sorry, 1991. That was a season when he got injured with a had a shoulder injury. And he missed nine games. Uh, Steve Walsh started those games. So you know, Archie did this with sixteen in sixteen games, and outside of his seventy two season, seventy eight, seventy nine, and eighty, the only seasons that Archie was able was healthy enough to start sixteen games. He's also the only Saints quarterback to ever be named to a Pro Bowl. He was named to two of them in 78 and 79. And I know today we're kind of like, yeah, Pro Bowl, that's popularity contest. But this is an era where, you know, deserving players went to the Pro Bowl. Uh, Archie uh, was recognized by his peers as being a great quarterback. Um, in fact, it was so... His accomplishments were so recognized in 78 that he was named uh, NFC MVP for that season, the first quarterback for a losing team to be named uh, his conference's MVP. That's a huge deal. Now, that award doesn't exist anymore. Uh, it's kind of been rolled into different awards, but still a significant accomplishment that no other Saints quarterback has ever had been named MVP, at least in their conference. The closest you have, I guess, is Offensive Player of the Year, but it's not really for the conference. Um, he also has three consecutive seasons of throwing for over 3,000 yards. Now, Aaron Brooks has four consecutive seasons from 2001 to 2004, but he never completed 60% of his passes. In fact, he never completed 60% of his passes for his entire career as a Saint. And that's... A, <laughs> That's uh, an important distinction because Archie had, as you saw, you can see in the background, Wes Chandler, Ike Harris, Henry Childs uh, in 79 there. But he only had those guys for, for three seasons. Um, Aaron Brooks had Joe Horn and then later Jerome Pathan. Uh, he had Dante Stallworth. He had a much more explosive offense. The... Uh, the um, 
and yet he couldn't complete 50 and he had Deuce McAllister and he couldn't complete 50 percent of his 60 percent of his passes uh Everett had two seasons 94 95 Bear only had two seasons his entire career as a saint uh that was 1988 and 1992 where he threw for over 3,000 yards um Archie is also uh 14th still all time in running quarterbacks uh ahead of Aaron Brooks who's probably the only other rushing quarterback that, that the Saints have had um and he's still number two all time passing yards uh he's a good uh almost 2,600 yards ahead of uh, Aaron Brooks. He is a good 7,000 yards ahead of Archie Manning. I know, I'm sorry, ahead of Bobby Bear, And he is about 11,000 yards ahead of Jim Everett. Um, yes, that's longe longevity uh, compared to, uh, you know, a guy like, um, say, Jim Everett, but Archie also played primarily in the dead ball era of the NFL from 71 to 78 when they changed the pass interference rules before they used to jam the receivers uh, and the scheme systems that were developed back then. You know, very, very difficult to complete 60% of your passes in that, in that era because you were primarily throwing the deep routes uh maybe a dump off pass to a running back but you will not you did not have the um for lack of a better term the west coast offense influence throughout the nfl that you have today um where you have high percentage throws those just simply did not exist and of course for most of archie's career he played with a revolving door of terrible offensive linemen he played behind uh <clears throat> you know had some average and primitive coaching um, coaching philosophies, co offensive philosophies, coaching schemes. They even had him running the college option, play, plays like that, where he really never got that development that um, a guy like Aaron Brooks had received, that a guy like Jim Everett received, or, you know, as much as we not Carl Smith and his conservative game calling, um, Bobby Bear benefited from. Um, in fact, Archie got so beat up, his throwing motion changed in 1978 to be much more of a sidearm pass. And if anyone's ever thrown a ball, sidearm passes are far less accurate than, you know, straight over the top throws. So that's basically my reasons why I believe Archie Manning should be number two all time Saints quarterback. This is Alan Ulrich again for Under the Dome. Thank you all. Now, if you enjoyed this one, hopefully you'll give it a like, maybe share it out to one of your friends. If you know any Arching Manning fans or people that are willing to uh, fight with us about who the number two quarterback is. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. We're trying to build this community. I want to get it up to 500 subs so that we can start doing some community stuff within YouTube. But in any event, thank every one of you for watching the video, making it to this point. I really appreciate the love. Who dat? We'll see you on the next one.